Hi folks, hope you're doing well today. So last time, we left off with the Arrarians. Around 590 years before Christ, the Scythians invade Armenia and end the Arrarian state. Shortly afterwards, the Medes establish themselves and fill the vacuum that leaves behind. The Armenian state continues to exist as an autonomous state inside our country, but it's still under our suzerainty. Being a suzerainty means that you're a tributary state with internal autonomy, but your foreign policy and relations basically belong to the empire or state who controls you. Around the year 570 BC, King Yervand Sakavakiats comes into power and founds the Yervandini Orontid dynasty. Notice the word Saka in his surname. That's what we call the Scythians in Persian, and that's what the name of the eastern branch of the Scythians was. Its rulers governed the Armenian state as royal satraps, as governors in the Iranian state, and all the future rulers and dynasties of Armenia onwards claim Orontid descent. The Orontids were of Achaemenid and Median origins, or at the very least, had a lineage that was tied to both. And the Orontids actually claimed Achaemenid descent to legitimize their political power over their satrap. The etymology behind the dynasty's name is linked to the Avestan word Aurant and the Middle Persian word Arwand or Arvand in modern Persian. And Armavir was their first capital. Persian rule in Armenia is briefly interrupted after a local revolt overthrows the Achaemenids in 522 BC. But then Darius the Great enters the scene and restores Caesarneity. In the Bestun inscription in Kermanshah in present day Kurdistan, the Kurdish region of Iran, you find the first written mention of Armenia as a country, as one of the empire's royal possessions around 520 years before Christ. Around 401 years before Christ, Xenophon passes through Armenia to get to the Black Sea and reports the reigning king, Yervandini, as the son-in-law of Artaxerxes I, basically implying that Armenia and Iran were ruled by the same dynasty. Around 336 years before Christ, Darius III, who used to be a satrap of Armenia, ascends to the Achaemenid throne. We now know that he would be the last Achaemenid ruler ever, but that's really hindsight. Nobody expected the disintegration of the state by the Macedonians. It came totally by surprise. Armenian men were drafted into the Achaemenid army and fought the Macedonians as a contingent force. Around 333 years before Christ, the Battle of Isis took place between the Achaemenids and Alexander's army. We lost, and then Alexander began to march southwards. We fought him again in 331 BC in the Battle of Gaugamela in present-day southern Kurdistan in Mesopotamia, we lost again, and Alexander marches eastwards, and the Armenian king Yervand Orontes, who participated in the battle, flees to Armenia, just as his country is about to be formally annexed by the Macedonians. In 330 BC, Darius III dies, and the Achaemenid Empire officially ends, and Yervand becomes the sole king of Armenia, and makes Armavir his capital. And this is where I end my dissertation. Thank you for watching.